Hello! In this video, I will show you how to use combo box in WPF. It may seem like a straightforward thing to do, but there are actually many sort of non-straightforward things involved, and I'll explain them so you can save a bit of time. And let's see here. We have a bit of an example. We have one combo box right here. Okay, one on the left. Select the item, it will be displayed on the label on top. And the same goes for this one as well. Say item 3 changes, but this one has a default one. So I'll show you how to uh, create a default one and how to use them in general. So first of all, XAML. Okay, main window.xaml. We look at the XAML code always first. And here we have the first combo box. And as you can see, the first one has combo box item and another one and another one and another one. Four items. We have four items declared inside the combo box itself. Okay. It's inside the combo box in the XAML. There is a way to create them, add them items in uh, C sharp, so that will be explored in the second one. Okay, but for now we have combo box one, we have CB1, the name, and then we have selection changed event. So this event will occur whenever selection changes. Okay, when the user expands it and selects a different selection. It will change and this event will occur. And in this example, we will display it uh, in label. Quite simple in this case. Uh, and for that, we have a couple of labels. And as you can see, combo box uh, number two is CB2. It's named CB2. And it also has another event. And that's it. Okay, so now let's go into C Sharp. And if you're not familiar with WPF, you can take a look at my WPF course if you want to get started, if you want to learn more. There are great examples, there are exercises, and it goes from basics to something a bit more advanced. MVVM is also covered, but it's covered in a very practical way, so it's sort of easy to learn quickly. You can learn it uh, and all that. Uh, and you can also pre-order my upcoming book on WPF. It's very much related to the course, uh, whichever one you prefer, or you can have one or both. Uh, uh, maybe watch the course to learn it and then have the book for reference. Uh, the links are provided in the description. So now back to this combo box, we have CB2. As you can see, we're dealing in uh, or rather with the second combo box right here. And that is in the constructor after initialize component. That's very important after that. We do everything pretty much after that, most of the time at least. We have CB2, then items, and this is how you add items, okay? This is how you add items, add, and then you need to construct, okay? You need to construct and provide combo box item because as you can see this is an object so you can actually provide a string and it will sort of work but i'll show you where, where it will not work okay we have in the selection changed lb content so that's the basically the string item one item two or whatever name is uh, uh, to display in this uh, in the label okay from the selection. I'll explain that a bit later, but now what would not work? Okay, so here we have combo box item. And in the second one, we generate them and we select it. Now, you could simply provide a string, but then you would need to select a string. Okay, you need to retrieve a string. But what we are retrieving is quite a bit more complex. Okay, now we can look at the first one. Okay, at the first one. So first of all, the sender. The sender is the combo box itself. Okay, so this is the combo box. We must first retrieve that. It's an annoying process and there are other media elements or other elements uh, in uh, WPF that will require such rather weird arrangement and rather annoying one as well. You can easily forget these things, but we have combo box sender okay that's the combo box and then you need to select selected item 
the property selected item but that's not where it ends okay selected item is an object so you need to cast it to something and by default that would usually be combo box item but if you were to insert a string instead it would fail as i said before okay so you want usually to go with combo box item as a sort of default choice okay so at this point we have a uh, uh, the combo box item right here, this whole um, wrap right here, combo box item. And from that, you still need to get content property, uh, which will at that point be a string. And you can convert it to string and assign it to the LB1 or in this case, LB2. Now, as for the default, you can see right here, we have CB2 selected item and we simply add uh, one of the items from the list. Now you don't have to add an item from the list. You can simply create some kind of a maybe default item or something like that. Uh, and you would just construct a new combo box item, but make sure they are all combo box items. Otherwise something might actually uh, fail. So that's another a good thing. But this is basically how you use the combo box item, how you select everything. Uh, the difficult part, of course, here is uh, how you actually get to the content of the combo box item. It's always annoying and you always forget that. Uh, at least I always forget these things. And it's good to have something for reference. Uh, now, you can support this channel on Patreon where you will find uh, the source codes, uh, source code files for all these... Uh, little lectures I have on YouTube or these videos. Uh, if you are a member, you will be able to access the same video, of course, and you will get the source code for it. Uh, so do subscribe to the channel, support on Patreon. And with that, we will conclude this video.